and it's in Pascal. And N, okay, N over here is known as your strain hardening index. And there's no units, okay? Right? So mathematically, this has been used, okay, to describe the stress strain curve up to its ultimate strain. Okay? Now, some of you might say, hey, Eugene, this is manufacturing, man. Why are we looking at these numbers? Okay, so later on, hopefully, yeah, today, okay, I will show you what these numbers are and what they mean, okay, when making decision regarding design or when making decision regarding manufacturing, okay. So now, if I were to divide So if, if, if I were to call this uh, one, and this point over here, point two, and point three, okay, point one, two, and three. And if we were to draw the deformation pattern, okay, we are to sketch the deformation pattern. Yeah, this is at point one, point two, point three. So what you see, so let's say if this is going to tensor, okay. So this is P, and at point two means the material gets elongated longer, okay. And the cross-sectional area, I, I I know you cannot see it from here, does become what smaller. Okay, yeah, I, I think you can see it. So this is one, two, and three. Okay, so there's a strain hardening rigid. So the energy, okay, the energy okay, in the strain hardening, remember, this is a strain hardening region. Okay, we're just looking. So it's going to be U plastic. And we're going to integrate, right, uh, zero to epsilon PL. Okay. Now the zero down here is at its U point. Okay. We 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 push the the we put we shift the zero. Okay. Up to its U point. Now the U point is at zero plastic stress now. Okay. So this is equal to A plus by B epsilon PL. Power N uh, D epsilon PL. Okay. So we just need to integrate very simple math. Okay. So this is equal to A epsilon PL plus by B epsilon PL N plus one divided by N plus one. Okay. And then bounded from zero to epsilon to the plastic straight. Okay. So we just substitute in. Okay, nothing difficult. Then once again, the units is in joules per meter cube. Okay. And then I'm going to, I'm just briefly going to describe the necking region, what is going on in a necking region. Okay. Now, necking region, as I say, uh, mathematically, it's not difficult to describe the equation, but I'm not going to include here in our, in our course. Okay, I'm just wanting you to look at a trend. Okay, how does necking look like? Some of you have done experimental work on this, you know, some of you have not, but I want you to have that level of knowledge. Okay. So in the netting region now, okay, 
Okay, so this is still the plastic region. Oh, can you all see? Uh, I'm writing too high. So plastic region. So we drew this earlier. Okay, and then it comes here. So this is the ultimate strength. And over here, this is your fracture. Okay. So I'm going to call this point uh, four and fracture is point five. Okay, so if we look at the deformation pattern, Okay, when it's at necking or in the necking region. So what you see now is you were you are able to observe physically observe a area where the cross sectional area does change, a region where the cross sectional area does change. Okay, so so this is your apply load P. So the reduction of cross-sectional area, okay, this is what we call necking. Okay, so this is four. And finally, we reach five, which is known as fracture. So what you see in tensile of a ductile material, you observe this type of failure. So this will be. Okay, so this is where we call it fracture. Okay. Eugene. Yes. Oh. <laughs> uh, looking at that deformation pattern that you uh, you drew out for the um, uh, like the one you just did before, like one, two, and three. Yeah. Uh, could you just real quick run through that one more time? Because um, like I'm just looking at it and I'm seeing that the first one's the smallest, the second one's a little bit larger, and the third one's uh, yeah. the biggest. Like I understand yeah. that it doesn't go back, but yeah, and and the cross sectional area does reduce itself. Oh, okay. So you're just showing that uh, like the more you there's, stretch there's it, there's no necking. Wells Wells four and five, right? Is where we have necking region. Then you see this reduction in cross sectional area. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, sir. Is yes. is the math the same for compression, or is that a separate topic that we're going to get to later? <laughs> so we're not going to talk about compression. We need to look into tension. Okay. Okay. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. In tension. Okay. Now, I'm going to uh, show you a real life example now. Okay. Uh, so where we started, remember I told you uh, a lot of people. A lot of engineers, okay. When they see a product, they ask what type, and then they ask the next question they ask is how hard. And that question, how hard, is absolutely useless in manufacturing. Okay, in manufacturing sector, and I'll, I'll I'll show you why. Okay, so we we know that in the plastic region. Right in manufacturing processes, in manufacturing, okay, in manufacturing, material has to undergo plastic deformation. Okay, has to go plastic deformation, right? Right. It, 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 you cannot look at the material to go through elastic deformation. Or you, I give you ten dollars. I want you to bend a piece of material for me so I can use it. Right. If the material original is straight and you give your client a straight material because you have not enough uh, energy to deform the material, and and your your client will not pay you. A straight bar, right? He wants to have a U shape. He will pay you a U shape. Yes or no? 
So that's why manufacturing, uh, uh, in manufacturing material, in manufacturing, okay, comma, material has to undergo what? Plastic deformation, okay? So I'm going to introduce to you, right? I'm going to introduce to you four different materials, okay? And they're in the steel family, okay? So the material. So I'm going to introduce you to the material and it's going to be uh, AI, SI 1045. Can anyone tell me why it's AISI? Anyone? What does it stand for? Anyone? Uh, American Iron and Steel Institute. Yeah, American Iron and Steel Institute. Okay. Uh, one year, this is in 2015. Yeah, 2015 or 2016. One student come to me before I start. Eugene, can you explain to me what is I-1045? I say, excuse me? What is I-1045? You know, 2015, 2016, you're happen to know what happened in 2015 right the paris bombing right and when when the students say isis 1045 my mind thought of a terrorist group what do you mean by isis 1045 someone going to bomb this place at 1045 that isis is so 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 sorry that humor so i so don't call it isis okay it's aisi 1045 okay so it's a piece of uh medium carbon steel so this will be our benchmark okay reference okay so if we look at the a value okay the a value is 553.1 megapascal It is okay. Then I'm going to introduce you to another material, which is oose ball. It's a low carbon, a low carbon steel, okay, or high strength. I'll, I'll tell you more details later on, okay. And it has one zero four zero. So it's twice of that of 1045. Then I have dual phase steel. The okay, dual phase steel is 600 series. This is running at 120. Okay. And then I have trip steel. TRIP, I'll tell you, all, I'll explain to you. All. In two weeks' time, we will look at the material size aspect of all this material. But I want you to just look at these numbers first. It's 800. Okay. And this is at 412. Okay. Now, the A value, if we were to look at this graph, the A value is somewhere around, is, is here. Okay. Is, is here. Numerically, this is here. Right, and then if I draw back a bit more, okay, this side is the elastic region, right? So this point over here is my is my sorry, crappy drawing. I hate it when I do that. I will I will draw again. I apologize. Okay. So remember, we we had this right. Right, so this part is what we call plastic region. Right, at this point is our A. And then if I shift this back, right, this is where we have our elastic region. Okay, right, 
so you can see our stress strain curve now. Okay. So A 